Basketball is currently the second biggest sport in the world only behind football or as us Americans call it, soccer. The game is exploding internationally in terms of both popularity and talent generated. The simple evidence is to look at the last five NBA MVPs. You have three international players, Jokic, Embiid, and Giannis. But to take it a step further, look at the increased level of national teams in international competitions. Yes, I know the FIBA World Cup does not hold the same weight as the Olympics, but you still have to look at it as some sort of evidence because the United States has not produced as well as it should have with Germany winning it in 2023 and Spain winning it in 2019. I say all this not to praise international basketball. I play overseas. I have to recognize my bias, but more so to show that people have woken up to this game. And I believe the reason is because basketball is so relatable. The ups and downs, the tough lessons, the overcoming struggle, the hard work it takes, the fun storylines even. It mirrors the human experience. And I know it all too personally. I live it. Like, I literally live it every single day. And that's why I love it. From observing tens of thousands of basketball careers to currently still playing out my own, I found three fairly simple principles that if I would have known and understood them as a young hooper, my journey would have been exponentially better and overall much more enjoyable. That's not to say my basketball journey hasn't been an absolute pleasure but you guys get the point. So without further ado, I'll stop rambling and let's get into the three principles that I wish I had known as a young hooper. Principle number one, there is always going to be somebody better than you. I felt like this needed to be said because a lot of young hoopers get this inflated sense like they're invincible. And this usually happens because they're dominating their current league, their current age group, their current environment. And this is not to take away from that success, but it's an important principle to keep in mind if you have higher dreams, higher aspirations to reach the top, top levels. Comparison to your current peers rarely helps your development. I remember my second year playing overseas. I was in Serbia and I was having a monster year. I'm talking 22 points, six rebounds, five assists on 52, 45, 88 shooting splits. Like an absolutely monster year in terms of volume and efficiency. If you guys know overseas basketball, you know those sort of stat lines are not normal. But listen, by the end of the year, I had completely forgotten this principle and I genuinely thought it would be smooth sailing from there on out in my career. Like for real, I thought I had the rest but in reality, I was just dominating the level I was at and it wasn't that high of a level, especially in comparison to the levels that I want to go to. Fast forward to the next year playing in the Basketball Champions League, I had a bit of a rude awakening because I had this false inflated sense of self. Now don't get me wrong, as hoopers we need to be confident, we need to be dogs, but it is vital to keep that grounding that you still have a lot of room to grow. You have a lot of work to be done. Because listen, there's always someone better to aspire to compete with, to inspire to be better than. This sort of grounding allows us as hoopers to keep that chip on our shoulder, to really still have that fire. Another great example of players awakening to this principle is what NBA players call their welcome to the league moment. For me personally, I love hearing players talk about these moments because you can hear the emotion in their voice when they remember the exact moment, the exact play where their ego had failed them. Playing the Warriors, Kevin Durant's on the team. So I follow him out to half court. I'm like, I'm gonna press you this guy. Like what? He catches it. He like looks at the shot clock. There's like six seconds left. Takes like three dribbles. He just left hand, three dribbles, gets to around 18 feet. Just hits me with a quick shoulder in the chest and just fades away bangs it too. As he's going back in defense, he's backpedaling, just goes, welcome to the league. Obviously, I haven't made it to the league, but I do have my welcome to Division One basketball moment when I transferred from my Division Two Western Washington to Division One GCU. We were playing at the University of Texas in the preseason, and I think I was guarding either Matt Coleman or Kerwin Roach on a pick and roll, and my big calls out switch. I switch, I fight to the top side over the big so they can't just dump it down. At that same moment, the guard kind of fakes the reject back my direction, and I step up just like a half step for one second and that exact moment of that half step the guard throws a lob and I don't know where the big is so I just kind of backpedal or kind of just fight backwards and next thing I know I look up guess who Jackson Hayes current center of the Los Angeles Lakers is catching the lob and two-hand dunking on my head yeah that one hurt the ego a little bit but for me it was more of a motivating moment 
making me realize that I have a lot of work to do to reach the level I want to reach. Okay, now for the second principle. More recognition and attention is not always better. The overall basketball scene has experienced a huge shift since when I was a young hooper in terms of how basketball is consumed. Yes, I still had hoop mixtape, ball is life, and even yay area is finest if you know that, but there was a significant less volume of highlight tapes. You had to be the best of the best to get a highlight mix, and honestly, if you had a ball is life, that was earned. And also at that time, the most common way to watch hoops was on nationally televised games. You'd watch the full game. It wasn't on IG Reels, it wasn't on TikTok, it wasn't on YouTube. With this in mind, today it seems attention and recognition is much more easily accessible and it makes the young hooper crave it even more. And listen, wanting to be recognized for your talent is not inherently a bad thing. It's a completely natural human thing. But you do need to be cautious where you put your time, energy, identity, and value. As an under-recruited, zero-star, Division II walk-on, I know this hunger for recognition all too well. It wasn't until I channeled this hunger into my training, my development, my game, that I actually started to get some sort of recognition. But this switch is what has allowed me to still keep playing at the pro level. To this point, I've overachieved recognition and expectations, and I believe that's because I never truly got it. Now, on the other hand, we have to look at players who got the attention and recognition early and it plagued them their whole careers. These cases break my heart when I see them because a lot of times they could have been avoided with one positive grounding influence in that athlete's life. Attention and recognition breeds ego and complacency if not checked frequently, if not put in its place. As time goes on and the general talent of the level you are at increases, mindset, hunger, and work ethic really matters. Talent without backbone gets exposed every time. The highlights do not work as a mask over the true product. As an observer from these falls of perceived greatness, I can't help but hurt for these young athletes. It's sad, but listen, here's your warning so it doesn't happen to you. Beware of early recognition and attention and what it's doing to you. Principle three. Now on a lighter note, here's a third principle I think young hoopers should really understand as soon as possible. More is not always the answer. As basketball players, there's this misguided theme that more is always better. More shots, more time in the gym, more, more, more. And realistically, as a young hooper, volume and more is very important. We need to be gym rats, we need to be grinders, but when I look back at my own basketball journey, I think I missed out on some development because I put doing more as my priority over all else. It was priority number one in every scenario. As I matured in both my game and my relationship with basketball, it became clear as day that doing more is not the driving force for success and good results. Steph Curry has not simply shot more than anybody else in history. Obviously, he still put in a ridiculous amount of hours and shots, but what Steph Curry has mastered maybe more than anybody else in history is how he works and why he works. His attention to detail and intensity of focus are second to none. I mean, there is no way you can make 105 threes in a row if you don't have otherworldly levels of focus and attention to detail. And this leads exactly to my point. Where volume and doing more fails, attention to detail and intention succeeds. All this being said, what's more important than doing more is knowing your why behind every part of your development. Be relentless in your attention to detail in both your personal and basketball development and watch your performance skyrocket. The capability to be able to do more while still being intentional and locked in on the details is the highest level of skill that you can have. It transcends basketball. It will be the source of greatness in anything you pursue in life. I remember my first time I actually tracked a workout. It wasn't until I was a senior in college. I had tracked workouts before, you know, 10 shots in this spot, 10 shots in that spot, but I had never actually tracked the percentage in each spot, the feelings I felt, the things I struggled with, and actually distinctly taken notes. Again, this habit took until my senior year of college to become part of my routine. I was a 30 1% shooter from three in college. So far as a pro, I'm 38%. Now what changed? I learned the power of intention and the necessary level of attention to detail it takes in each workout. I missed time and development because I did not own this principle. Don't miss yours. With all this being said, if you are subscribed to the channel, I want you to win. If you aren't, I'm not sure. No, I'm just kidding. I still want you to win. I want you to achieve your basketball dreams and I'm genuinely passionate on helping every young Hooper get what they want of out of this game of basketball. Here's my heart, you can take it or leave it. Even if you hated this video, I wouldn't mind if you go hit that like and subscribe button because this was fun. So until next time, live atypical. She
say, yeah, I know. Wish I can make it easier. I can't. I just know that I'm wrong. Get what they want out of this game of basketball.